We need some good gospel singing to help us go another mile. The church will triumph. Amen? Go home in a little while. Hallelujah. My, my, my. We've been talking about the remnant the last two weeks. And that's what we're talking about today. Hallelujah. We've been learning. We started out and what we've been using it as our foundational Scripture. We began in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, talking about the prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel and his showdown there with the prophets of Baal. And you all know that they set up the altar and the prophets of Baal called for the fire and there was none. Yeah. Amen? Come on. I think old Elijah, he might even poke fun at him. said, cry louder, holler, maybe he can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, nothing happened with them, guys. And Elijah walks up there and he repairs the altar. And he gets it ready and they cover it with water and they fill the trench full of water. And he calls on God and God supplies the fire. Yeah. Jezebel gets mad because after that, Elijah slays her prophets says, I'm going to kill you. Elijah winds up in a cave and that's where we come in. Right. Amen? Come that's where we picked up the tale, the account here. Elijah hiding in the cave and the still small voice coming to him and saying, What doest thou here, Elijah? And Elijah thought he was alone. He was the only one left serving the Lord. And the Lord said, You're wrong, Elijah. Amen? Amen? In 1 Kings 19 and 18, he said, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And we know that this was a remnant of people because the Apostle Paul would talk to the Roman church there in Rome. When he would write the book of Romans in the 11th chapter, he would say, Even so at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Hallelujah. There is a remnant today, a remnant of people that will live for the Lord. Amen? A remnant of people who will stand for something. A remnant of, a remnant of people who will stand for Jesus and let the world go by. Amen? I don't mean going to hell, but I'm talking about the things of the world. Amen? They will not be conformed to the image of the world, but they will be transformed by the renewing of their mind, by the Word of God. Amen. Into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. From glory to glory, changed into the very image of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Talking about a people that will be separated. Somebody that will take a stand for something. Somebody that won't fall for everything. Amen. Somebody that will fall for everything won't stand for nothing. Amen. And we got that today. It depends on what the latest Christian fad is on what people believe or what direction they're going in. We've seen it. We've seen it with things like the book of the prayer of Jabez. And I'm not doubting that any, but it came along and apparently it's gone. Amen? We've seen it with your best life now. And of course, there's a new one coming out every few months by that crowd right there. But anyway, whenever all of that is long gone, there will be something still remaining and that is the truth of the Word of God. Amen. We saw it with the little God movement. You're a God, I'm a God, we're all little gods. And now they're trying to revive that mess again. That's something that's been around since the beginning of time. And before, before the beginning of time, whenever Lucifer decided he would be like God, he would ascend above the Most High. He would set himself up as God. Well, man's been trying that. And it don't work. Amen. It don't work. But there will be a remnant that will not fall for everything that comes along. Amen? Amen? There will be a remnant that will demand the original and not the counterfeit. Right. Amen? There will be, oh my goodness, see that's, that's the reason we have this here today. Because there was a remnant that, that refused to allow it to die. That refused to allow it to be put away. That refused to allow the powers that be at that time in the Catholic Church to keep God's people from having the Word of God for themselves. Amen? Because of men like William Tyndale. Amen? Because of men that, that, would, that would come up and, and decide that they, even though in a, in a time whenever it seemed like nobody else cared. Nobody else cared whether they had the, the, the Word in the English, at least not anybody that you heard of anyway. There would be men that would say, no. And listen, my goodness, you need to read. 
You need to read some of the church history. Some of the history of where the King James Version came from. And find out the people that gave their life in order for us to have the English translation that we have today. Amen. Amen. It was bought with blood. Not just the blood of Jesus. Thank God for that. Not downplaying that any at all. But the blood of men and women that were willing to give their life for the cause of be, for us to be able to have the written Word in our hands today. My, my, my. I read some, some of the history on William Tyndale and how that he his work and how that he was working on <coughs> translating the scripture and how that he was uh, you know working little by little and he had to do most of it in hiding because yeah. the pirates that be wanted to kill him but he was on a boat and as they they were traveling across there and I don't know exactly what location they were at but anyway a storm came and it it caused the boat to fall apart and his writings that he had translated thus far were on the boat with him yeah and the and the history says that he stood there on the bank of after the they were washed up on land and all of their possessions most of their possessions were lost he he stood there on the sandy banks of that beach and looked out into the ocean and he saw his notes and his translation so far that he had had he saw that sink to the bottom of the ocean the work that he had put into it the hours that he had worked it would have been easy for him to say, well, forget it. Yeah. I've worked. I don't know how much of it he had done. You might be able to find that out if you look up the historical count of it. But I don't know how much of it he had done, but he had worked. And he had labored. Yeah. And it was something that was dear to his heart. Amen. And he stood there and he watched as what he had so far sunk down below the waters. Yeah. But that didn't stop him. Why? Because he was resolved. He had a heart that was resolved to make sure that every man, every woman, and every child had the same opportunity to read God's Word as the priest had, as the bishop had, as the Pope had. Amen? He said if, it was, if, he said if there was any way possible that he could get it done, he would make sure that the man behind the plow would ha have the same knowledge of the Word of God, have the same ability to read the Word as the Pope. Amen? Thank God for people that were the remnant, those that were left that still believe that God's people deserve to have the Word of God for themselves and not have to go to a man to get it translated to them. Not have to go to a service in order to hear someone, some pious, uptight, somebody's hypocritical and self-righteous to get up and read to them out of the Holy Scriptures as if they're not worthy to have them for themselves. Amen? Thank God for a remnant that saved the manuscripts. Thank God for a remnant that saved the English translation Amen. of the Word so that we could have it in our presence today. Amen. Amen. So God's always going to have a remnant. That's what we've been talking about. Right. We begin looking down. We found out in the book of Genesis how that God had a remnant there as it were Noah and his family. God saved mankind by allowing Noah to build the ark and to survive the flood and thank God that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Thank God there was somebody that was too because the Bible says it wasn't just that it wasn't just that Noah, well, you know, I just pick him out of the crop, or even that he was in Brother Scott, I think, told me last Sunday that he was in the bloodline of, of Jesus there, whenever you go back through the genealogy. And that's great and that's good, and that is one of the reasons why he was spared. But if you also read where it says Noah was a preacher of what? Righteousness. Amen. For 120 years. So it wasn't just that he was one of the family, it was that he was still standing for God. He was still part of the remnant. Amen. He hadn't forsaken God, had not turned his back on the on God and it was holding on to the truth and, and as he worked on the ark and as and the Bible says God looked down first there in Genesis the 6th chapter he looked down and, and the earth was it had was the man their, their thoughts were on evil continually and yeah. there was so much sin and it was so perverted and filthy that God said I'm just going to get rid of it I'm, I'm sorry I even made them all but then it says but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord Amen thank God for Noah a preacher of righteousness a hundred 20 years uh, while he works on the ark he's preaching to the people judgment's coming God's going to pour out judgment it's coming as they made fun of him it ain't rained before it doesn't matter judgment's coming God said it it's going to happen amen and just like today you can tell people Jesus is coming back oh psh, I heard that all yeah you might have heard it before it might have been when you was a baby the only thing that means now is that we're closer to it now that you're an adult than we were when you was a kid Jesus is coming back amen and even and listen even if it's not in your lifetime it's still happening. 
Sooner or later, you're going to die. You're going to stand before a just and a holy God. And your only escape from judgment is going to be the blood. Amen? Right. Amen. The only escape from judgment, the blood. The only escape from judgment in that day was getting on the ark. On. And Noah preaches for 120 years. Yeah. And God had a remnant and allowed mankind to be saved. Amen. Amen. Come on. God has a remnant today. Right. We learned in Isaiah 10 and 20, had it not been for... No, I'm sorry. That's not the Scripture I'm looking for. Isaiah 1 and 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. There was a very small remnant in Noah's day. Amen. There's a very small remnant... There was a very small remnant in Elijah's day. There was a very small remnant in Paul's day when he was writing there in the book of Romans. There is still a very small remnant today. Yeah. And the hope, any hope that this, that this nation has, right. any hope that this world has, oh. as far as being brought to a saving knowledge Amen. of Jesus Christ, rests upon the shoulders of the remnant. Amen. That was the, Noah was the hope of his day. Come on, right. His voice preaching righteousness for 120 years. That was the message. Of course, the message is the hope. But the message has to have a messenger. All right. The Bible says, how can they hear except they be a preacher? Amen? There has to be somebody that will rise up. And it's, great for you. it's great for you to know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. He is the Savior of the world. But in order for others to hear that, somebody somewhere has got to tell them. Somebody somewhere has got to share it. Somebody somewhere has got to have a testimony. The remnant's going to have a testimony. They're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They're not going to fall for everything that comes down the pipe, but they're going to stand for truth. Come on. Their characteristics are going to be those that are different right. from the new age, modern church world as we know it today. Amen. Things that have been expelled from our churches like prayer yeah. and fasting and reading the Word. Those things are going to be characteristics. Those things are going to be things that the remnant practices. All right. The remnant's going to pray. The remnant's going to study the Word. Amen. The remnant's going to stand for something. The remnant's going to be a separated people. Amen? Yeah. The remnant's going to stand out from the modern day church world. Come on. You ain't going to fit into all of their cliques. Amen. Because you ain't going to be willing to do everything that they do. That's right, brother. You see, I still believe in old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Amen. True. I still believe there's some places that a Christian should not feel comfortable at. Right. I still believe there's some things that a Christian should not feel comfortable doing. Yeah. I still believe there's some music that Christians should not feel comfortable listening to. I still believe there's some things that people watch Yes. That Christians should not feel comfortable watching. Amen? Oh, right. oh, hallelujah. Not long ago, by means of communication of the internet, I was looking at some people's conversations there on Facebook. Christians saved, born again, talking about some kind of thing in the theaters. Well, I had been blessed enough to have seen the preview. Yeah. I don't know if I was watching Fox News Channel or maybe it was something the kids had on, but they showed the previews of the commercials. You know how they're advertising what's in the theater now yeah. and when it's coming out. Yeah. For the least, the preview wasn't fit to watch. Mm. Let alone go to the theater and watch it. And all oh, they were loving it and, and upping it. Oh, it's a great movie. It's funny. It's really hilarious. Yeah. Smut in the day that we live in has become hilarious. Amen. Right. No more clean humor. No more cleanness. That, that's boring and that's old style. Amen. It's got to be filthy to be funny. I got news for you. If you as a Christian can sit and watch that and listen to that filth and muck and mire and consider it amusing and entertaining and funny for you, something's wrong down on the inside that you need to find out what's going on. If you can drag Jesus who lives in inside of you and sit down in a theater and watch some kind of rated R movie and hear them take God's name in vain and go around half dressed and then use all kinds of filthy language and talk about sex, not just talk about it but do it right there on the screen in front of you and it don't affect you, something's 
wrong on the inside of you with your relationship with God. Amen. And I know that's old fashioned. I know that won't win me any awards. And I'm going to find them down here standing in line waiting to get in Sunday morning when I come to unlock the door. But it's the truth anyway. Amen. And God's rending the people in these last days are going to refuse to sit down and eat everything Hollywood has. They're still going to be brave enough to stand up and say, hey, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Preach it, brother. Somebody. Yes. Well, that's good. Somewhere. He's going to stand up for what's right. right. Amen. Somebody somewhere is going to get sick and tired of the church that has gotten used to the dark instead of letting their light shine before men. Amen. On, Somebody somewhere got to draw a line somewhere. Right. Church don't know what line is anymore. Come on. Say it. The church don't know what the line is anymore. Amen. They did, the lines have become so blurred that they don't understand anymore. Come on, brother. Amen? Come on. Well, that's just the way Hollywood... Somebody said that. That's just the way Hollywood does things. Mm. Not in front of me, they don't. That's right. Amen? Come on. Not in front of me, they don't. Come on. Me and Reese went to the theater. Oh, I don't know, 26 years ago, I guess. <laughs> Last time we was in one. Yeah. And the what we went to see, I guess you couldn't really find anything bad, and it was animated. There we was, you know, twenty years old. <laughs> Watch it, I think it was the Great Mouse Detective or something. Hmm. So what was it that there was no foul language? There was no lewd humor. Hmm. There was no filthiness at all that I can remember. But we didn't feel comfortable sitting in there. Yeah. We didn't feel right. Come on. Something in there gave us a bad feeling. Right. And it's probably due to the fact that the movie before that, they took God's name in vain. They had sex right there on the screen. Mm. They told their dirty jokes. Yeah. People sat there and ate their popcorn and fed up on the smut of the world. And we came in along behind them and all those old spirits that loved to fellowship that stuff were still hanging around. Mm. Amen? So we didn't feel comfortable there. Right. In some places you shouldn't feel comfortable. Right. There's some things that you watch you shouldn't feel comfortable watching. Come on. Amen? Come on, say it. There's some music. Yes, sir. That many listen to you shouldn't feel comfortable listening to that. Amen. Amen? True. And the remnant's not. I said all that to say this. The remnant's still going to know what old-fashioned conviction is. Right. Amen. I realize that Brother Scott's convictions and my convictions, they're not all going to be the same. Right. Amen. True. But a long time ago, I quit criticizing anybody's convictions. All right. I quit questioning anybody's convictions. Amen. You know why? Because the closer we get to the end and the more I saw and the more I was around, the fewer people I saw that actually had conviction. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I just say, Lord, I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't feel the same way about that. Come on. But thank God they still got some conviction in their life. Amen. Amen. We got too many people who don't have any conviction today. We got too many people who can do anything and everything with anyone and anywhere. And it does not bother them. Yeah, we have produced a layout of seeing church age. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. They don't have to know what the moving of the Spirit of God is. Come on. But the church, on, the remnant, me. the real remnant, that which is left over <laughs> yeah. from the original, they're going to have convictions. This is one of the, this is one of the traits. Amen. This is one of the characteristics of the remnant. Yes. They're going to still have convictions. Amen. It's going to bother them. Well, there's some things that's going to bother them. Right. Amen. There's some things that's going to bother them. They ain't going to laugh at the same jokes right. that the world laughs at. Well, They're not going to be involved in the same things that the world gets well, involved in. Amen. They're not going to be. The Bible says, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say, say so. so," and the remnant are going to say so. We ain't talking about closet Christians. Come on. We ain't talking about Nicodemus. Come Amen. On. Come to the Lord at nighttime. Right. 
We're talking about Christians that will take a stand for something. Uh -huh. We're talking about born again believers that are a part of the original. We're talking about the remnant. Amen? As Noah who preached 120 years righteousness. Amen? Yeah. To those that are about to be called away by the flood. Oh sure, it'll be small. A very small remnant. It was in Noah's day. How about Daniel? Amen? How about the fact that they set up a decree? That it, it, actually, the, the guys that thought all this up, they just had it in for Daniel. They were jealous about him. Amen? And they said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We know that Daniel prays. Yeah. We know that he prays to his God. Yes, sir. So we'll get the king... Was it Darius? We'll get the king to sign a decree that if anybody prays to somebody else, that when they're caught doing that, they'll be through into the lion's den. Come on. If there's anything I could change about the song, I don't care what you say, I'm going to pray anyway. The words in the song says, and I guess I'm going to have to look at it and rewrite it and make it something else fit in there because it says the difference this time is that he opened the blinds for the whole wide world to see. That wasn't different. He did that already. Every day, he would open up the window toward Jerusalem and kneel and pray. That's not something he started doing just after the decree was made. He always did that. See, the law didn't stop him from worshiping God the way that he worshiped God. The law didn't stop him from praying to God the way that he prayed to God. So we find here, you don't find anybody else that defied this decree. We find uh, Daniel who defied this decree after he heard, listen, he can't pray to nobody else. You can't go home and pray to your God like you always been doing. Guess what he did? He went home. He went to his chamber. Yeah. He, op he, he opened the windows and threw out the sash. Amen. Amen. Got out on his knees and prayed towards Jerusalem. And listen, as the Bible says, as he had done before. Amen. And they called him praying. Right. See, in these last days, somebody's going to pray. Amen. Somebody's going to pray. I know it's old fashioned. I know it's old school. I know people ain't got time for it no more. Somebody's going to take time to pray. Somebody's going to take time to seek the face of God. The remnant people are going to pray. They're going to seek God. They're going to be a praying people. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Come on, enjoy. Daniel prayed. Daniel prayed. Amen. Three times a day. Daniel prayed. Yes. Well, we, we, well, preacher, we do that. I say it over breakfast, I say it over my lunch, and I say it over supper. Yeah. Bless the meat, let's eat. <laughs> Amen. I need the kind of praying Daniel did. Uh -huh. Amen. Daniel took time to pray. Right. Daniel took time to pray. He had a busy schedule, I'm sure, but he took time to pray. Amen. Yeah. We got time to do everything else. Amen. We got time to fit in our soap opera. We got time to fit in our game show. We got time to fit in our favorite series. We need to take time to pray. And the remnant will. Amen. The remnant's going to take time to pray. Oh, listen, God's calling. God's calling for some people. Amen. He's always had a remnant. And that ain't the question ain't whether he's going to have a remnant or not. He will. But the question is, you're going to be part of it. Amen. He's calling people that'll pray. He's calling people that'll stand. Have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Here's three old boys. They stood out of the crowd like a sore thumb. Why? Because everybody else was bowing down to the false idol. Everybody else was kissing the false idol. Everybody else was worshiping the false idol. But these three old boys said, we ain't going to do it. God needs some people. I know it ain't literarily correct, but God needs some people that ain't in the English Dictionary. I know this might be now. But then we need some people that are standing and say, I ain't going to do it. I I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm not going to bow my knee to the, to the prophets, to the Baal. I'm not going to bow my knee to the false gods on, of this day. I'm not going to do it. So God's going to have a people Amen. that are going to pray. We're talking about characteristics of the remnant. Yes, sir. They're going to pray. Amen. They're going to refuse to bow. Amen. A small remnant, sure. Right. But a remnant nonetheless. I told you a couple of weeks ago, I don't think I said it last Sunday, I might have. I think it was a couple of weeks ago because I think Brother Sweet was here when I said it. America does not have a lock on this remnant deal. As a matter of fact, she's losing it. I told you, there are probably going to be more people coming out of these other nations, amen, that are part of the remnant than in the, than in the United States of America. You see these places over here where in this red and this yellow, there's places where they, they are they're limited, they are they are under the bondage of the law concerning the worship of Jesus. Right. They're under fear of persecution. Amen. Some of the remnants gonna come up out of there. Right. 
probably more than is going to come out of this nation. Amen. My, 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 but there is going to be some people. There's going to be some people that's going to take a stand in these last days. Amen. There's going to be some people, some ark builders. Right. Amen. There's going to be some line tamers. Amen. <laughs> Amen. There's going to be some so there's going to be some fire quenchers. How about that? How about fire walkers? Amen. Amen. There's going to be some people that's going to walk, uh, hallelujah, in the midst of the flames because they denied the false gods of these days and they clung to Jesus. There's going to be some people that will stand for Jesus. Amen. Yes. My goodness. It may be very small. Amen. Mom. But it's time. It's t if there's ever been a time, of, my goodness, the shootings that took place out there at the theater. My goodness. And the shootings that take place in our schoolhouses. Amen. The mighty roar of gunfire is now a local sound. Right. And our city streets are filled with angry men. Amen. If there's ever been a time that we need the remnant yeah. to stand up with the backbone of the Holy Ghost boldness mm -hmm. is today and say, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. He's the only hope. He's the only way. He's the only truth. He's the only life. Yes. That's what the remnant's going to do. Amen. Going to stand for Jesus. Going to lift high the blood-stained banner. Yeah. You see, there's going to be some people that refuse to take the cross out of their churches. Come on. Regardless of what the best-selling book of a purpose-driven church says. Amen. Come on. There's going to be some people who refuse to get rid of the 1611 King James Version and trade it in for some perversion. Amen. There's going to be some people who refuse to quit singing about the blood. There's going to be some people who refuse to quit preaching about the cross. There's going to be some people who refuse. Amen. And you may be out there today in your mega church and with your mass congregation and you might think, yeah, that's just a few. Amen. Well, that's alright. You know why? Because straight is the gate and narrow the way and few there be that find it. So when people tell you, yeah, you're just in that crowd of a few, say glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Straight is the gate. Narrow the way. Few there be that find it. Amen. You count it as one of the few. The chosen few instead of the chosen frozen. Amen. 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 Oh, I like what somebody... I got some feedback from somebody up the road about it, but I like what somebody posted a, a picture the other day. And said, if you... And it's, I don't have the picture with me. I'll show it to you. If you think God is pleased with you spending millions on this, and it was it showed this beautiful building. I, it, it, I don't believe it was the Crystal Cathedral, but it was another big... Maybe in a Catholic church here, and then another big cathedral here and in here at the bottom it had Joel Osteen's church with the big basketball. I didn't even know it was Joel Osteen when I posted it because I didn't. You have to take a magnifying glass and see who's on stage to know it's Joel Osteen. Somebody knew it though because that's the feedback I got from it. Anyway, the picture said this. If you think it's God's if you, if you think it's okay with God that you spent millions on this and it's shown the different fancy churches while this is going on and at the bottom it had little children starving to death. Swollen bellies. Yeah. Nothing to eat. Come on. And he said, if you think it's okay with God that you spend millions on this while this is happening, you have lost your mind. And I agree with that completely. Amen. Amen. Truth. The church, as we know it today, are trying to build a kingdom on earth. Right. Amen. And that ain't what Jesus came to do. Right. His kingdom was not of this world. Truth. That's why some of them got so upset with Him, I suppose. Is because they wanted him to come in on a white charger. Right. They wanted him to come in and overthrow the Roman Empire. Yeah. And set up his kingdom right here. Amen. Yeah. Oh, but that ain't what he came to do. Right. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Right. He came after a remnant, blood washed people that were going to stand for Jesus, that were going to hold on to him, that were going to love him right. more than they love the world, mm -hmm. that were going to love him more. And they love the false gods of that. Did you see how many followers he had, didn't he? Compared to the masses, it was very few. Very few. And even out of that, even out of the ones that he had, the few that he had, even out of that came. Only a few that would really stick by him. There in the end, anyway. They all got 
you know, filled with the Holy Ghost and with the boldness later on and, and rose up and thank God they did. But at the time when he was on the cross and he looks down with blood-filled eyes, he can't hardly see nobody. He don't see Thomas. He don't see Peter. He don't see James. He sees John. Amen. He sees John at the foot of the cross. If you've ever scratched your head and wondered why John was the one chosen to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ on the Isle of Patmos, think no more. Try to figure it out no more. Then when he looked down, and there stood John, the place of the crucifixion, all the way to the end. Amen. All the way to the end. My goodness. See, the remnant ain't going to just let go of him when things get tough. Amen. The remnant ain't just going to serve him for the sleeves whenever things are going good. Amen. Hey, Brother Billy, how's things going? Well, things ain't going so great, but Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. God's still on the throne. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Ain't going to ain't going to let go just because the ride gets rough. Exactly. Amen. The remnant. We need some people. We need some preachers. Listen, can I say that this 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 morning I'm fixing to close. We need some preachers that are willing to get their hands dirty and their hair messed up. All right. Say it. Amen. Come on. I'm about to lose one of my shoes. <laughs> I might as well kick them both off and forget it. We need some preachers that ain't afraid still to get down at the altar right. and snot with some people yeah. Yeah. and pray them through. Amen. Yeah. And, and get a hold of God with them. True. Yeah. Amen. You know what we got? We got preachers that just sashay from the beauty shop. Right. And somebody goes to the altar, they lean over to one of the deacons. And pray for them. Uh. Well, why don't you? Yeah. Fred your mascara run. Mm. Amen. We got mega church pastors. I, I dare you out there. If you're a member, listen, I know what being a pastor is. If you're a member out there of one of the mega churches, try to call your pastor this afternoon and see if he'll visit you at the hospital. No, you'll get one of his. Report. Associates. Associate, yeah. you get, I start to say flunkies, but you'll get one of his associates. Because yeah. the shepherd's got too big to take care of the needs of the sheep. Yeah. Amen. The flock's got too big for the shepherd to take care of the needs of the sheep. Amen. Right. God's looking for some preachers that are still praying with the Absolutely. people. God's looking for some preachers that you can get a hold of them on the phone and not just get a hold of their secretary. Amen. Exactly. God's looking for some preachers that'll get their hair messed up. Amen. Wow. God's looking for some preachers who don't care to weep between the porch and the altar. Amen. Like Joel 2 and 15 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sanctify fast. Call a solemn assembly. Amen. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast of the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Absolutely. Weep and say what? The Bible says, let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to a reproach. We need some people today that will weep between the porch and the altar. We need some people that are willing to pray. God's looking for that remnant people that will stand up in these last days and get on their knees and exalt the name of Jesus and cry out for God to have mercy on this nation and on His people. And on this world. That's true. God's looking for some preachers that'll pray. Yes, sir. Amen. Exactly. He ain't interested in your degree you have on the wall. Exactly. Amen. Come on. Now he ain't taking away from your education, and God don't put no premium on ignorance, but he ain't interested in that. Come on. The Bible never one time tells us God went looking for an educated man. All right. Amen. Yep. The Bible never one time tells us that God went looking for somebody that was pretty. Come on. Somebody say, Thank God. The Bible never tells us that God one time went looking for somebody that was wealthy. Yeah. What it does tell us is that He sought after a man. He sought for a man that was after His own heart. Oh, that's remnant. That's remnant kind of thing there. Amen. We're talking about a people that ain't after the riches of the world, but they're after the heart of God. Amen. We're talking about a people that don't use God as some kind of vending machine saying, gimme, 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 gimme. We're talking about a people that are after His heart, after His love, after that relationship, that bride, bridegroom relationship. We're talking about a people that will still seek the face of God. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. 
sanctify a fast. Oh my goodness. What is that? Amen. Church, the church of the day don't know too much about fasting. Call a solemn assembly. Get them all together. Amen. Somebody said this week that God never called anybody to come to church. He called them to be the church. Well, there's some truth in that. But He does want you to go to church. At least He wants you to gather together somewhere because He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. Even the more so as you see that day approach. Amen. Amen. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast, a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Get the old folks in there. Get the children in there. Get the, old, get the babies in there. Amen. Get the bridegroom out of his chamber. Get the bride out of her closet. Get them in there. Get the preachers in there. Get the preachers to weep in between the porch and the altar. We need more prayer than we got going on. Amen? When we were in Ireland, somebody said our church prayed too much. I said, Lord God, help us, please. I wish that was the truth. Amen? Yeah. He said, my house should be called a house of prayer. That's what we need. The remnant's going to pray. The remnant's going to seek God. The remnant's going to stand for something in these last days. The remnant's going to have convictions. The remnant's going to be a separated people. Amen? Come on. The remnant's going to be a people you can tell a difference in. They ain't going to be just like the average Joe. They're still going to know how to get a hold of God. Amen? That's right. And i got news for you. The closer we get to the end, the more phone calls the remnant's going to get. Amen. The more people you're going to hear from because they're going to be saying, would you please pray? Please pray. People know who to get a hold of when they really need prayer. Maybe the only time you hear from them Amen. That's it, brother. I've had people approach me. They said, "Will you please pray?" I know these other this other guy. He he professes to be what you are, but I can tell he ain't. Would you please pray? Yeah. Had a had a boy come up to me in Walmart with his eyes filled with tears and said, "His grandma was at death's door." Yeah. Said, would you please pray for my grandma? So I'd ask that guy that works back there. He professes to be what you are, but he uses some of the same words we use. He does some of some things, the same things that we do. Somebody's watching you. Right. Amen. Somebody's watching you. Very close. They're seeing your reaction. They won't see if what you've got's real or not, Brother Sleese. Absolutely. I don't know if I want what Sleese has got or not, but I'm gonna watch and see. All right. See if what he's got's real. True. Or if he's just got some of that Sunday religion going on. Yeah. World's got enough Sunday morning Christians, not any of the rest of the time. Amen. Amen We're talking about a remnant that's going to live for Jesus, not just on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes, sir. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. Going to live for Jesus. Going to have a testimony in their in their mouth. Amen. The prayer on their lips. Yeah. Going to be willing to pray for somebody when they ask you to pray for them out in public and not just say, well, I'll put you on a prayer list. Yeah. Reach over and touch, get to hold their hand and say, Lord Jesus, please. Amen. I'm Oh, Brother Billy, they'll look at me like I'm weird. Good. He's going to have a peculiar people. That's it, brother. Amen. Going to be different. True. We're going to be... Do they stop for one minute and think, well, I ain't going to cuss in public? No. If they don't care to cuss in public, I don't care to pray in public. Amen. Right. Don't bother me one bit. Come on. To lay hands on somebody out there in their car, there in front of the drugstore, yeah. the dollar store, Walmart. Say, God, touch them, heal them, move them, ball them. Amen. Yeah. They don't care to cuss. Yes, sir. They don't care to take God's name in vain, and I don't care to lift His name up. Amen. That's right, brother. We're talking about a remnant. Come on. Brother Billy, that sounds kind of strange. I don't see a whole lot of that going on yet because there's a few. But there's a few. Amen. Yes, sir. A very small remnant. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Yeah. Sanctify fast. Get everybody together. Come on. Let's have prayer. Right. Let's fast. Let's seek the face of God Come on. while He may be found. Hallelujah. Praise Talking about a remnant. We found it there in the book of Genesis. We found it with Noah. We found it with Elijah. We found it in Romans there with Paul whenever he was talking. We found it with Daniel and the three Hebrew children. You see, God has promised a remnant people. And we're, I'm trying to show you that all through His Word, you find them. 
uh, from the beginning all the way. We'll get to the end before we're through. We'll get to the book of Revelation. And we'll find there, even after when it's all said and done, God still has a remnant. Right. He always have a people. I know it seems like sometimes that you're just trudging along all by yourself and there ain't nobody else out there living for God, but it's not true. There are people that are dedicated to the Lord. There are people that still believe in praying. There are people that still have faith in Jesus Christ. There are people who still live by faith. Amen? There are still people today that seek God. Amen? That pray and that believe Him and that love Him. There's still a remnant of people today living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody else have anything this morning?